What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Am, and I'm back with another episode for my podcast, Am I Grown Yet? I have three guests here with me, and today we're going to be doing the first episode of this month, which is Mental Health Awareness Month, for those of you who didn't know. Um, Before we get started with the episode, I want to give my guests a chance to introduce themselves and tell where they're from. Uh, My name is Chinadu. I'm from New Jersey, Union, New Jersey. Um, Yeah. Yo, it's G-O-P-O, George, uh, Biz, uh, whatever you people out there call me, um, Brooklyn, New York, um, but I'm currently a New Jerseyan, so yeah. My name is Kareem, uh, Roselle, New Jersey. All right, so uh, for anyone who's wondering, the reason why I wanted to have three guys on this episode is because I feel like most of the episodes that I've done have been sort of centered around um, women and more so what our mental health is like, our emotions, what we feel, how we feel like guys are. But I wanted to have guys here who can actually speak for themselves on behalf of the rest of the men out there. So to start, I want to ask a very general question. What is being a man to you guys? That's a great question. I guess personally to me, it's um, I don't know, accountability, responsibility, um, trying to find your purpose and your identity in this world. I think it's a lot of growing pains and like uh, navigating your coming of ages like properly. It's a complex question, but it's like a real, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a good question to ask men. I feel like we all, based on upon like how we grew up, we might have a different way of how to answer that question. That's a great, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the things that we've experienced might lead us to come to a different answer but it's like I feel like generally it's just like being grown enough or man enough to admit that you don't know everything that's like that's a big part of being a man you know what I'm saying like we don't all have the answers Mm -hmm. and it's like people might say like oh you're a man because you lead but it's like nah I can I can also be a man and let somebody else lead me you know what I'm saying I can follow somebody else's lead and still be a man still maintain masculinity that type of thing you know what I'm saying so I think that has like a lot to do with being a man like you said that's a loaded question right for me in my perspective being a man is just that 50% of the equation and that's just the masculine energy that's Mm -hmm. simply what it is no rules no regulations for it no standards it's just your masculinity and your 50% of that equation that give that balance of the universe that's just it now whatever that entails for the individual, because like you, bo- you guys both said, or whatnot, how you were raised and all that stuff, what you've seen, what you've been through, all that stuff plays a factor. So whatever that goes on for you in your in your life, that as long as you put your fifty percent in that equation, that's you know you, your your role. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's interesting that you guys answered in the way that you did because I feel like if this question was asked maybe about like 10, 15 years ago. The response would have been something like based on like high heavy masculinity, like on some a man is like someone who is like super strong. They don't they don't take nothing from nobody. Like very like a very dominant. Yeah, a very like mm. over dominant uh, type of response. So I think it's interesting that you guys look at being a man like what you just described. Now I do feel like that's exactly how we are though, like by nature. Like that's just the male, because when you say the man, of course, you know, we're talking about the, the man human or whatever, but as males, that's just in our, written in our DNA. We are like that, Arr! because if you look at the animal kingdom, like we're all typically the same, the same kind of behaviors that we all kind of show. But of course, you know, we got to be a little bit more civil than everybody else. So, um, but all that dominant stuff that, you know, other males and other species shows, we have that same kind of tendencies we territorial we uh, don't come around here kind of thing Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and that's basically just the man being the protector and the provider Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so same things though but not to single you guys out but i know being a being a man uh in america specifically is one thing but what's being a black man in america specifically in these times because um as you guys know these times is always these times. No, but... <laughs> times no, is always but, these times. It's always no, these times. No, but, but what yeah. I mean by these times is I feel like as black people, 
we already knew what being black in America was like, but I feel like the rest of the world is just now starting to wake up See to what that's it, yeah. like. So that's why I'm asking you now, like, what do you feel like, well, what, what would you describe being a black man in America like now, like modern day today? Spooky. It's spooky. I, um, so I recently, like, had a thought, like, um, so mainstream America, and by mainstream America, I mean, like, basically right <laughs> like <laughs> they don't care about you they only care about your output mm. you know so that's your athleticism your art your slang your culture your cuisine all that stuff and now since you ask what it's like to be a black man in america i think i'm like thinking about that a little bit more it's because it's like you're very disposable mm. like and being a black man, especially after you seeing like black bodies die, you kind of question your mortality and you kind of understand like, yo, how disposable am I on all aspects? Like from my body to my thoughts, to my, my output, to my creativity is like, you start to question that. It's like, what the, like, how long am I going to be here for? Type, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Out of my own volition. I think that's what it feels like to be a black man in America. Yeah, no, nah, he's right. It's not easy, bro. Like, for real. Because, like, you really don't know. Anytime, anytime, like, you leave the house, you might not come back. And it was like that for generations before us. Mm -hmm. But it's like today, with social media. We're going to let you know you're not coming they're back. They're going to see mm -hmm. it. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. My kids, if I have kids, is going to see it. The niece, nephew, grandma, anybody that has Facebook, whatever, you're just going to see it on a constant loop. And that plays into your mind. You get paranoid. You get anxious. You know what I'm saying? A lot of that paranoia and that anxiety turns into depression. And then it's like, how can I deal with these things and still maintain my masculinity and my manhood and still Facts. be able to walk? do my day-to-day -day goings on go to work mm -hmm. gotta deal with the boss gotta deal with my co-workers that don't have any cooth don't know what the, the exactly. how to maneuver certain conversations they're like you know what i mean it's stepping on like eggshells piggy, and, sorry go ahead yeah no finish finish go. to piggyback what he said is like that um that energy of like being the master of your own domain mm -hmm. is like nah bro it's really you in the matrix your domain is really a matrix and there's this bigger thing that can cut your lights off at any moment. So then you start questioning, is like, bro, is like, what am I really, how am I, what am I really like, I guess not dominating, but what am I really like? In charge of. In charge of, exactly. You know what I'm saying? If you're not even in charge of your own life, what are you really in charge of? It's like that Juice scene. Remember Juice when he was like, oh, the Tupac scene where he was like, I got more power than you, yeah. than you ever have over your own life. life you said, yeah. why? I'm, exactly. I'm letting you breathe, ain't I? Exactly. And that's sort of like exactly. the same thing that, you know, that people exactly. kind of have over, like, our people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's weird, too, because it's like, it's hard to express that to black women. What I mean by it is because, and I think it's just by the way, and I think it's kind of like, Men like men were raised to like, yo, you don't show emotions, blah blah blah. You kind of just like keep it in, and that could be poisoning, right? So the more you keep mm -hmm. it in, the more you start thinking about your own problems and not worrying about the problems of black women. So we get wrapped up in our own heads, thinking, yo, no one gives a about us. We out here on ourselves. We out here for self. Is is me, me, me? It's all on my shoulders, and it's because we've been trained to just really not express how we feel and then like once that happens it's like you kind of add to your own destruction from the inside as well as the outside agents that are like out to destruct you word so i feel like to that point in that scenario like when you're in a relationship with say a black woman i mean being a black woman in america is a whole different type of right, situation yeah. as well but now you guys are both coming back home or coming back to wherever you guys are and you're both trying to unleash, you know, the day that you guys had. And it's like, as a as a man, you guys 
and this is just my opinion, I don't feel like you guys are able to emotionally express yourself in the same way that women are. So when it comes down to dealing with somebody was being biased towards you, somebody was being racist outside of that, it's like you, you're carrying that in whatever other aggression, whatever other trauma. I guess the question that I'm asking is, what way do you guys feel is the healthy way to address all of this aggression, especially in relationships? Because obviously as women, we can only like try to be there for so much we can only try to guess what you guys day is like so much but like what would you say is the healthy way to deal with that trauma that you guys are carrying if you've come to that point yet i was actually about to start off with, with the with the last topic <clears throat> or whatnot and you then I, doing I, it yeah yeah i know I'm, 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 I'm a little two days behind you gotta you gotta <laughs> excuse that or whatever I'm, I'm taking it all in absorbing right so like but it ties into where i'm where i'm going with it to, to this question though um, black in America almost feels godly to me. You know what I'm saying? We are like on this pedestal for everybody, whether it's lust, whether it's love, whether it's fear, whether it's anger, but they... But people, is that godly or being objectified? Well, that's true. I like that. Because like, you know how it's like, you know how it's like, they always show the fact that we like always can make it through. We always make it through. We always push through. But it's like, bro, I'm a regular... Can I curse? No. I'm a regular person, bro. It's like, I don't want to... I like the like, century, you know though. What I'm saying? It's I like, like I don't want to have to be the, 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 the poster boy for, like, resilience, bro. It's like... Yeah, how sure. come, I, I can see that. I can like, do that. How come we can have, like, shows like Friends where it's white people living their best lives and doing whatever, the, whatever they want to do and it's like, all our stuff has got to be about our pain and how we get through it. It's yeah, like, I'm, I don't know about y'all, but I'm like tired of the slave bikes. movies. I'm tired no, of the yeah, slave bro. movies. Facts. Facts. I'm tired of the oppre oppressive movies. Cause at the, I just I don't wanna know. make a grilled cheese and not be pressed. <laughs> Not why you gotta? Why I gotta? Black, why black, I gotta black, rain? On the, the black day. experience is way more. It's more to us. Than 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 slavery. So like there's way more like to us. We're godly. The domestic like, violence. Yeah. We're and not kind gods, of things. bro. We just. I, 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 I know that, but the way people have these emotions towards, towards us, us. Yeah. it makes it feel like that because it's like yo because you got objectified. Yeah, it true, can be a double the two sides of the same coin. No, you guys could both be right. You no, know tracks, I mean? it's a little said, bit of both. Yeah. It's a little yeah. bit of both. Because the, cause then you got like the people who's, you know, killing us, they reacting out of fear and anger. So they have all these emotions for no apparent reason at all the same towards people, us. But and the same then people who want to be like, yo, I wish I had exactly, the ability of a LeBron. Exactly my point. I wish right? I could moonwalk like Michael. I wish my body looked like that, this woman. And it's like, cause you could cause then they see they see us and they put us up here like, wow. Like, but that's so much responsibility. It is. And we didn't sign up for that. Yeah, I know I did it. Because you want to know why? Because you want to know why? It's the same. The, to your same point of them looking at basketball players like LeBron and like all of these, all the these high level yeah. entertainers and stuff. And it's like, yo, but maybe it's not in my genes to be a basketball player. And then oh. now it's like you have this high level expectation to, to walk in the shoes of somebody else who just so happens to be black. And it's like, well, that's that's not really. I don't want to rap. I want to be an accountant, <laughs> right? bro. Like, don't ask me to rap at the house party, my G. I want to be an accountant. Like, do that dance y'all was doing. Do that dance, God. no, bro. God. I came here to Jeez. just chill. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, Quavo. <laughs> Relax, bro. <laughs> but I think I think when you talked about like how it ties into like how we deal with just all of our things and coming back home and trying to connect with our significant other and how, especially a black woman, right? It's like, it's a dance. It's really a dance. Is you gotta know when to speak up, when not to speak up, and that's on both sides. But I feel like for black men, there's a lot of like behavior we have to unlearn first in order to open up. Mm. Because if we don't do it properly, like we're gonna say some, something the wrong way it might not be perceived the right way especially for someone who's there for you you yeah. don't ever want to lose support it's an imperfect science but it's yeah. a science nonetheless you feel Facts. me because it's like if you're dating somebody you got to learn their love language mm. and vice versa so it's like the way let's say you dated somebody before this person the way you were speaking to this person and how you communicated things if you're communicating at all which is a whole nother mm. thing that we got issues with too you feel me mm. it's like it's it will differ from the way you communicate with your new uh, uh spouse or whatever you feel me so it's like we got to figure out those things and then you got to be able to unlock certain things because it's like yo i'm bearing my soul and it's like the last time i did it if at all like it cut 
You know what I'm saying? And you don't really want to expose yourself. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't like, really want to expose yourself too crazy like that. You know what I mean? But, but you know what? I, I don't know if it's because where I'm from, maybe Aries, how I was raised or whatever. <laughs> but like I've had this, I have such this dominant personality that I've always expressed myself. And I've always been like, yo, I'm here. This is what's going on. This is how I feel. This is what I think. And if you don't like it, you got a problem with it, then we shoot in the five outside. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's it's I, for me, I've always been able to express myself. So even in a relationship, I've always, you know, told her how what I was thinking, my thoughts, my feelings, blah, 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 or whatnot. So um so even in a relationship or outside of a relationship, like for me, I've always found it like super easy. Even when I said what it was gonna tie in, because what I, that pedestal thing. Yo, put me on that pedestal. Showtime, because I'm going I'm to turn the game on. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just want to address something. So just to go back a little bit. With a man being a man, and you, you George, you said that the aggressiveness is kind of like what makes a man a man these days. I don't know if that's exactly what you said, but that's what I heard. I feel like most guys before would agree that a guy who is that in tune with his emotions is considered weak. As being a black man, do you feel like you will as you guys being black men, do you feel that being in tune with your emotions is something that you're even able to do, especially since when you go out on a day to day, you have you have to have this guard up just so nobody tries you or whatever. Like, do you feel like you're able to be in touch with your emotional side or does that have nothing to do with I, being I, a I don't think a, a guy man. needs to be aggressive, though. A man needs to be aggressive. I think that's sort of maybe it could be like a personality trait. But for me personally, I can only speak really on, from from my behalf. But I walk outside naked, yo. I'm no armor, no. I'm not guarded, no shield up, no nothing. It's just me, bare ass, butt ass naked, <laughs> running down the streets. You know what I'm saying? So that and that's but that's how I am. But that's metaphorically speaking to me, just being bare. You know what I'm saying? I tote no armor, no shield. I don't gotta defend myself. Don't gotta prove no point to nothing and nobody. I'm just out here, yo. How whatever I think, whatever I feel, this is just out in the open. You getting George 100% of the time. That's admirable, yep. bro. I'm not gonna lie. Cause mm -hmm. you boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like it could also be like a the thing of like how you raised, you feel me? Yeah. Cause it's like, I know for me, like the way I was with my parents and stuff and like how my parents brought us up, like they're, I'm a first generation. Like my parents are from Nigeria. Like they migrated over here. And, okay. you, know, you feel me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, um, me and my brothers, like, we're similar in the fact that where it's like, we weren't really support. Like, if you weren't being spoken to, there's no reason for you to speak at all. And even exactly. if you are being spoken to, you can only speak a certain kind of thing. If you try to express how you really felt or really thought about something, it's no. You're getting slapped in your mouth. You, you're talking back. You're being this and the next one. And it's like, all right, cool. When you're a kid, it's like you don't really know what these things really mean but you internalize them and then grow up and then start to act like, or not act in certain instances. You kind of low key start to become your parents in that way. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it's like, I started to understand is like, now since you're older, you kind of pick up the traits that your parents had. And now it becomes a sense of like, I know me is like, I didn't ask you that question. Why are you telling me that? <laughs> or like, it's like you start to have those same things and you gotta be like, oh, that's something I picked up when I was yeah. a kid. It's yeah. like, you, you only even, know what you're supposed to know, yeah. answer when you're supposed to answer, and like, whatever you feel, lock, especially Nigerians. I'm telling you. Whatever bro. you feel, we just lock it in, bro. Yeah. We just lock it in. And then that affects any any kind of relationship where you're supposed to uh, communicate with anybody, be at work, be at church if you go to church, sports if you play sports, you got a girlfriend, you got friends. It's like, it's certain things you might be able to communicate just like, on a like, oh, hey, how you doing type thing. But it's like other things that might take you a little bit of a while to like, all right, maybe I can share this and maybe I can't share this. And maybe I can be 100% honest with this and maybe yeah, I can yeah. kind of hide certain things. You know what I'm saying? So Cause your it's tricky. Because you really ask about, don't care. No, don't ask about you, your man. emotions. I think it's interesting that you guys are tying in the whole um, culture aspect of it because I think that even being black, there's still kind of like, you have people who are still raised under different types of cultures. Mm -hmm. So... I think it's interesting, um, and I want to stay on the topic of the Nigerian household, if it's okay, for a little while. <laughs> because cool. I hear it so often, and I have... <laughs> I'm about to give all the shade to my flag. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. 
No, because I have a lot of um, Nigerian friends, and I hear it so often that, um, Caribbean friends for that matter as well, that the topic of talking about like anything on the emotional side or anything, any sense of compassion, I feel like a lot of like first generations, a lot of, you know, a lot of people in this generation, they just don't feel that they are, like they have that relationship with their family, well, with their parents. And it's usually tying down to the way that they were raised, like how you were just saying, being shut down about feeling certain ways and just kind of like a structure. So what do you guys, what, what, I guess when it's time to, I don't know if you have kids, Chin, but I know you don't nah, have kids. Oh, yeah. For, don't. <laughs> I thought you were to say that. I was just like, I know you don't have kids. I know you have kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only, I wanted to be sure because I know that I hear sometimes now, like people say, you know, I don't want to become my parents. I don't want to follow those ways that they raised me. So how do you guys feel about, you know, being a parent at some point versus the way that your parents were to you in that aspect, as far as being there emotionally for your for your children? We do not have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, you could go, though. You can go. I would say I'm kind of glad I was raised the way I was raised because it's like now I see what I'm not supposed exactly. to do. And then if I'm cognizant of that, if I catch myself doing those things or falling into those things in the sense of like shutting down my kids' emotions, putting uh, what I think it's more valuable than what they act, like listening to them, like that's a, your parents don't listen to you. It's like if I can see myself doing that, then I know that I should probably stop and actually like do the things that my parents never did for me. Like, no disrespect to my parents, but in the sense of it's like working with the negatives always makes for a better outcome for the next generation. So, shout outs to my parents for making me the guinea pig. Right. <laughs> Not real talk. Like, my kids is going to be great. Yeah, because they only know, they only did to us what they know. Like, yeah. you know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, That's they can, true. And it's like, yeah. That's true. when you look at it like that, you I kind of like, like, look, from coming to knowing nobody here. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Say that, bro. Setting up a pretty damn good life for me and our brothers and them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they did the best they could. So now, mm -hmm. on top of that, now they got to go be good parents, like, great parents to yeah. us. Like, they going to fall Some got to fall to Some got to fall to You know what I'm saying? Some got to fall You really can't ask your dad to, like, take you to basketball practice when, like, he got to, like, Douche, do, right. you know what I'm or, you could, or, or console you if you was like yeah. dealing with a girl, she broke your heart or whatever. It's like, nah, we ain't worried about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we like, ain't worried about it's it. Not, it's not too much we could do. Like, who is this girl? How do you, like, blah, blah, blah. But whatever. Like, I just feel like the validation of your kids' feelings and emotions and stuff is very, 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 very important. Like, from day one. Yeah. I, I remember, like, That's your I was. Form a support system. I was such family. a sensitive kid. Like, Small stuff used to make me cry. And, like, I remember, like, my mom used to tease me when I would cry. And, like, I love my mother to death, bro. Like, wallahi. But she was, like, she used <laughs> to sing a song. Wallahi. She used to sing a song, like, when I would start crying. And I would just be look at her. I'm like, damn, son. <laughs> I'm still crying. Son. Like, what you want me to do? Like, you feel and me? It'll make you cry. making me cry more. I'm saying. Loki is like, mom, how is this supposed to make me stop? Fam. Fam, oh my, yeah. So like that type of stuff, like I'm not, I'm not on that type. But like he says, like you have to, even regardless if your parents were the most outstanding, you have to be more outstanding than them anyway. Because like you're supposed to be better than your parents anyway. You know Loki, I mean? it's kind of teaching you like, like shout outs to them too for making. <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy. Shout outs to them for making me so emotionless mm -hmm. at some points because it I'm actually in works in certain. It works in like work. It works when you're dealing with people who you don't need to deal with. Mm. You know who to give. You know who's worth your time. Mm. Because if you start reacting to everything, then it's like, bro, like you're a bull in a china shop. Anything you start, you you look crazy because anything's gonna set you off. off. Yeah. So shout out to them for like that. Yo, you know what? I think I'm more fifty fifty on this. I'm I'm a little bit fifty fifty on this. Now I don't know how old are you, Ring? Not to throw you, not to hold throw your whole. Shit. <laughs> there, I can't curse out. That's right. I'm gonna just blur it 30. at this point. Okay, I'm you, 26. Oh, all right, cool. Maybe because I'm 36, and I, I think I was telling you this before that I'm a little, I'm a little bit on the borderline between the old school hardback, <laughs> the hardback <laughs> ones, right? And the hardback is the Nigerians. I'm Trinidadian, so my dad was raised in Trinidad. Hardback, you know, what I'm saying the the the, uh, the Central Americans hardback too. Right. You know, yeah. when they came over here, or whatever. So I'm a little bit of them. 
and a little bit of the new school America at the same time. Cause it, like for me, I remember one time, yo, me and my dad, we was in Trinidad and we had my nephew who was only probably about like three or four at the, at the time. And we were on the basketball court, mind you, his mother no way to be found, but we we on the basketball court taking him out for a little boy time. And I think the basketball hit him and he fell and he started crying. But we didn't console him at all. We was like, yo, you going to get up, dust it off, and stop that crying. See, and, your mother would have went and grabbed them, though. Yeah, so we, we wouldn't even allow the mother to do that. Even if she was there, like, nah, you're not, you're right. not touching them. He got to toughen, toughen this one out. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit of both on the situation. I'm going to be like, yo, you crying? Now, I'm, I'm for black men, black children crying. But it needs to be some sort of balance I, to I it. I agree. Though. I agree. You know what I'm saying? That. Cry with guidance. I, I agree. Cry with guidance. <laughs> yeah, cry with guidance. I'm gonna come clean. I'll grab the guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'll like, grab the baby. I ain't gonna like, lie. Like for, for, like for me, right? Because I have a daughter. She's about to be 10. So, like, but it's, it's, maybe it's different for a girl because I'm like, oh my God, my girl. Yeah, but if it was a, a boy, girl, so you but if, be she, doing if, she, if he's like three or four, not, not even three, maybe like four or five, and you crying for snacks, I ain't with it. Oh, yeah. I feel like yeah, I don't yeah. know. That, that's yeah, what I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I feel like crying for. I feel like four or five. It's like he wants for some snacks. snacks. Oh, I'm, I'm, all right, so I'm not talking about tantrum crying. I'm talking about okay. He probably let out a little tear. He had a long day, bro. He wants what? Oh, okay, okay, okay. He wants his snacks. See, now you got to digest him. Like, why are you crying? Because the snacks. No, I'm yeah, like, you unpack are you it, hung- but yeah. you don't like smack him up. Like, stop crying. You don't, don't need know, a snack. <laughs> <laughs> my mom would have just walked past my ass. Yeah, it <laughs> worked. It'd be like, look, look, listen. If it's not in the fridge, you just got but, to wait. But, you, but like, you know what though? But I'm pretty sure y'all parents, even though they did that, my parents did the same thing. But they still raised two fine ass gentlemen. Oh yeah, not nah, facts. Oh, so, facts. So what they did wasn't like a hundred percent wrong. We was That's just crying for snacks when That's we finished saying. the snacks early. Like, we would just <laughs> eat them it. too fast. I like, need exactly. more Dunkaroos. Yeah. Right. Send yeah. those up. <laughs> Send those Dunkaroos up. And that's the thing. You gotta like every situation is different, right? It's like if your child or if your son is crying out of being a brat, nah, I'm I'm not nah, with that. Nah, at I'm all. taxing that. But you know, <laughs> you're not on it. But you know, I think I think, and not to sway, but I really think that that is why it's important to have a man figure in the child's life, especially for Balance. a boy. Especially yeah, for a balance. boy, know, because yeah, balance of the like universe. like what my response just was, if I saw my four year old son crying that he wanted something, as a nurturer by nature, I'm of course gonna see. I mean, once I realize it's for a snack, then I'm be like, relax. Sliding, Amber is sliding but on the court. I'm a nurturer. <laughs> over him as if there's a grenade about to go off. <laughs> like, why are you crying for for, for dungaroos? <laughs> We go into the store to get the We're right now. We're going to go oh, to the well, store to get the Right now. <laughs> Fire up the Camry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I do think that that's, and George, I know we were talking about this in your segment um, of the mm-hmm. episode. We were talking about um, the importance of a male in the child's life. And that's whether it's a girl child or boy child. I just strongly believe that today, um, because of this idea that most men were raised in a way to not show emotion, that now everybody's trying to like bombard, like, no, you need to cry about this. You need to show you feel this way about this. And to, to a certain extent, like you guys said, I do agree that it should be that way. I do agree that you know men shouldn't feel like they have to carry all of this and not be able to unload at some point. And I'm not saying boohoo cry unload, but at least acknowledge what you're feeling and be able to address it so that whatever happens moving forward, you're not carrying that, whether that's in a relationship, whether that's raising kids, whatever that looks like. But I like what we were saying earlier, like I've never had that problem because one, Maybe it's just like who I am, but then at the same time, I'm an artist as well, too. So I've always had some sort of way to express myself, whether it was through art, whether it was through drawing, painting, or just verbally just straight up saying, yo, nah, I don't like this. I don't like what's going on here. You know what I'm saying? So I've always had that released. So for mm-hmm. now, at, at this point, I'm like, oh, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm Gucci. It's good that you said that. Because I never really told it everything for, I'm pro, I like, even when, not to cut you, not to even like think, good, but I've, I'm, even in a relationship, I'm pro telling my significant other, yo, speak how you feel. Don't tote those emotions and keep it inside. Don't tote them. If you, even if, even if you're just throwing it out in the, in the universe, at least you saying it and releasing it. 
Now, it don't even need to be an argument. It don't need to be a, a big, long, drawn-out conversation all the time. But I need you to release it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I've, because I know the importance because I've That's done that nice. all my life. You know what I'm saying? I've always That's released. Nice. That's something I'm growing on as far as, like, um, being comfortable with people releasing, like, people speaking their emotions to me because, like, I feel like, yo, bro, I don't want to know too much. Or, like, yo, shorty, <laughs> you, I get it, but, uh, do I, <laughs> you know, I, yeah, no, I, hear, <laughs> I hear that, I hear that. So, I've, like, now, like, and I think that's another part about being a man we have to understand is, like, other people have emotions, too, and mm-hmm. we got to kind of be there. We mm-hmm. kind of got to, like, be there for it. And you say you have brothers, right? Yeah. So, I think that's, like, a great battleground test is to, like, hear your brother's emotions and actually be receptive to it because especially like growing up as parent uh, children of uh were of not this land were immigrants is like we, we were conditioned not to like care about emotions so even to our friends and our family members we sometimes compart we we sometimes like compartmentalize and like downplay their emotions and those are good ways to just be open so when you do have a woman in your life you can be open with her just as much as you're open with your friends and those are good battlegrounds mm-hmm. well George you mentioned one of your outlets for um, expressing yourself is through art what are some ways you guys express yourself in a way that's not literally by saying look I'm feeling like this uh shoot eating you know what I'm saying? Watch a little Chicago PD. It's like, nah. But, uh, but nah, like, nah. But honestly, like, talking to people, for me personally, I like to help people with their problems. So, like, if somebody was to lay a burden on me, it might help me either forget about my issues or just, like, put my stuff into perspective and then help me deal with my own stuff. I play ball. Like, that helps me. Like, you were saying, like, mm-hmm. I feel like everybody needs a release. Mm-hmm. Some sort of emotional, physical release where it's like, you're not having all this pent-up BS about yesterday, last week, two months ago, somebody cut you off in the traffic lane and all of this. You know what I'm saying? Like, real talk, like, everybody needs something that they can just... Those little things way up they, on you and they start... They ladder up, bro. Yeah. Like, they really do. And it's like, if either if you could go to the gym, go to the gym. If you could start a boxing class, do the yoga... Meditate. Uh, yoga helps, you know Meditating what I'm saying? Helps. Meditating. I play basketball, that helps, you know what I'm saying? Anything Making music gets your mind, yeah. Like all of that stuff, talking to people, it helps. Even the smallest conversation, it'll help you, you know what I mean? Let me let me ask you a question. Let me let me fill in Amber shoes real quick. Does do men use sex as a way to release? Not oh, me. facts. Not me. That's facts. Not me. I'm not speaking personally. <laughs> but, I don't know, Kareem. You might have to share something. No, no, but like like, if we're being real, like, duh, everyone uses, like, not everyone, but, like, if it's a if it's a way to not think about or to feel better, like, what, are, like, okay, eating is a way to feel better, you get, But like, what happens after the sex, though? Yeah, I was about to say, like, are you really feeling better? It might yeah, be, like, but uh, just, like, instant gratification. Sex. It just, Does like, it that's really what it is. Eating but a that's whole tub of ice cream, what happens what, after the whole tub of ice but cream? But that's what I'm saying, it's like, do you really feel better after eating a tub of ice cream? Exactly. Do you really feel better mm-hmm. after that sex session? It's you do, the same you probably do in the instant. Instant, but like a couple Once hours it after to that, set in, yeah. you like I hundred percent agree with you. Is it like it's kind of like people use things, and sex is one of them yeah. mm-hmm. as a way to escape. To, yeah, yeah. The, Boom. the only Boom. the only real escape specifically for guys though. Yeah, I feel and, like. but the only the only the guys. only legit. I real escape is actually speaking about what's going on, how you yeah. feel. And you probably wouldn't even need to have sex. Exactly. Ex- okay, exactly. If you just talk some that's shit the exactly. crazy thing, exactly. though. If you just talk some shit that's, through. That's, that's the crazy but, thing, but, though. But there's there's the, guys who are filling in all of these one night stand, one night stand, one night stand, and it's like however many bodies in, and you're just now realizing, like, you know what? Maybe I should. That's goofy. Try though. to understand. With, with, with this perspective, that's pure though. Goofy. Even though the men are using the sex as the category, I still is the same concept where people are using something other than speaking about it to release. Now, somebody might use it as sex. Somebody might use a cigarette. Somebody might use a blunt. Somebody might use a, a drink. Some people might use the tub of ice cream. People fight. But, yeah, people fight. Like, so they no, use different ass. outlets. Dude, but sex, though, that's a soul tie, though. Well, it's, it you is, can't it really is. compare. I totally agree. You really can't compare you dabbling in some cookies in a no, tub we're not, we're ice not, cream. So dabbling in the- <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, I, I don't I don't. 
don't agree with bong, it. Bong, bong. I don't agree with it. But, you know, <laughs> that's the reality you can't, of it. I just, I don't know. For me, and I always address um, sex with somebody who you don't, I mean, it's a soul tie regardless, but I feel like mean, meaningless sex, um, specifically for guys with women who you know for a fact that you're just using it for a release, I feel like that's a super immature like way to go about addressing your feelings. And I get I, I get, agree with you. Totally I get agree. that for some men they don't understand why they're doing it. I feel I like some say, I feel like so some guys that's really, why I was saying so some can, guys get way so down the line and, and don't realize so like So can no. you really judge them if they know if you know that some if you know that sometimes <laughs> they might not understand what they're doing or they're not even developed to understand the consequences that they're that they're that they're doing, or oh, they're not even understand why they're doing it. So, so, can you really pass such a hard judgment? It might not so even be. It's yeah. easy. Mm-hmm. It's easier. Mm-hmm. It's I easier see. to ask that question as someone who may not have been a victim to it. And I'm not speaking on my own behalf. I'm just saying it's easier to say as a man who can fully gravitate around the fact that, you know, me me having sex with this woman was not for any emotional reason. It was just to fill a void. The woman on the other side of that may have that may have been like an emotional like feeling for her. 100%. So I just feel like you know I'm not saying that it doesn't justify it, but it kind of doesn't for the guy. Because I want to frame like. it. Sorry, I want to frame it in the way like he said it was like um, his mom used to make a make a song when he cried, right? But she didn't understand that that did more damage than him actually crying. It might have done more damage, right? So conceptually, it's kind of the same mm-hmm. thing. Exactly. It's like Yo, you had sex with me and you knew I wanted this, but you didn't want any of that. And now you didn't understand how much that hurt me. So you know, see what I'm saying? So mm. it's like instead of like they see in the like they say in the in the corporate world, let's use this as a learning lesson. This is a te- this is a <laughs> teachable moment. <laughs> this is a teachable moment. Instead of framing it as punishment, and I know it's kind of crazy and wild for people to actually try to accept that. Be like, no, a man should not do that. A man should not do that. But you got to understand, it's like throwing aggression at somebody who doesn't know what they're doing is only going to make that, might make that person feel worse. Yep, true indeed. So if they don't even know how to like express their emotions off rip, like you think they're going to become better once you start berating them? But you They're going to double down and that and I'm sorry they're gonna double down on that that mess they're gonna double down that 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 BS but you know ultimately the mature way in looking at it is exactly the way that you described it maturely as a woman someone who may have may have or may be a victim to a man who is in that phase of finding himself like of course as a mature person I would think like you know what maybe I'm just an experience for him maybe I'm that that one woman t- until he gets to that point where he realizes that he should go see a therapist or that he should talk to somebody but as does, a very as a very a mature woman. as a very mature woman of course down the line you come to that thought but in game but in the, in the moment in the moment <laughs> i don't think i don't i think you kind of have to set it off time i mean it's only i'm not saying that a woman who decides to just completely start combating him like yo your dog you're doing blah 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 i'm not saying that that's the right way to handle it but can you really blame her no like can you, you know what there's like there is that that's the thing like and I think as a mature human being, I guess, is like, once you start understanding relationships, and this is something I learned, right? Like, there is really, no one's really, like, guilty or no one should be blamed. Because I personally, um, I had one of my friends call me, and she was like, oh, like, you don't reach out to any of your friends. You don't speak to, you, like, we're friends, but you don't, I'm like, that's just me. But now I understand that someone said that to me. And instead of like being negative and like, and being defensive, I'm like, oh snap, this is a, a like a very teachable and a learning moment for me to actually work Reem, and become. Reem never hit me up, was like, yo, let's get on this track. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> let's become a better, like to become a better person. That And that's like, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of unlearned behavior that men don't realize that they need to unlearn. And it's all situational and it's all person to person. Like, what they don't some, even think or, that, yeah. sorry, they don't even think that them, they themselves have issues. Like, we live mm, in a, in a society that tells men we're black, but like, you know what I'm saying? Men, period. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, like, this is your world, my, my G. Yeah. 
You know I'm saying this is your world, my G. Like anything you want, you can have it. And, some and if of those they say you can have accepted. it, they're lying. And some of those behaviors are accepted. That's exactly. the crazy most, part. most of it. And now in the world that we're living in now, it's starting to turn a little bit where yeah. it's like we're giving yeah. room and spaces to mm-hmm. other kinds of people. And it's like the counter world is like, nah, damn that. We still own everything. Mm-hmm. And it's like you still have young boys coming up thinking that they could talk to women any kind of way, talk to young girls Which any is kind not of way, the case. talk to other men any kind of way, other boys any kind of way. And it's just like, dog, like, I this think, is not that. You know what I mean? I think there's like this sense of uh, freedom and speech that has come about over the years that I think entitle people, especially upcoming generations, to feel like, I can say whatever I want to say and there be no repercussion. Because I feel like um, back in the day, like there were certain things like what you were just saying, certain things you just wouldn't say to somebody. You wouldn't just walk out your house saying like, oh, I'm going to smack you in your face. I mean, if you did, y'all would just fight, whatever. But I feel like now, and I don't know if it's because people are getting a lot softer, people are, I don't know, whatever the case is. But I think that there's definitely been a change with the whole speed of, of well, the freedom of speech, I should say. Right. And it's like, if you really even deep it on a level where it's like, just how we deal with each other as a community, because it's like, we live in our own world within yeah. the world, you That's feel right. me, as yeah. black people, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you really think about like, how many, like talk to any woman you know and ask her how many times she's been catcalled hmm. or grabbed at in the street. Bro. What a mask on. I don't understand You understand it. what I'm saying? And I it's don't like, understand They'll it. say like, oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> I can see you're beautiful in the mask. But it's like, fam, like you didn't, she didn't leave the house for that. You know what I'm saying? She didn't leave the house to be harassed on the street. She didn't leave the house to be grabbed on. You know what I'm saying? And this is like a conversation that like men really have to really just like deep and internalized like dog like who do you think you are like you're not king solomon you're not king david mm-hmm. you're not jesus christ like who do you think you are coming out of your house grabbing and talking to like yo excuse me miss behavior, with the thing, you know? thing like you're that's not, like that stuff that we would, exactly like, and we like you like, said oh, sp- there's you know so the many things part? that we have inside of us that we don't know, you know that we need to part? i'm 50 50 on that the too. i blame the media too i'm 50 50 I blame on the that. media the well, thing ahead, that i don't the thing that i don't subscribe to is if someone's like yo if you ain't out here putting up crazy numbers bagging chicks da, 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 you soft that's what I'm saying the you media soft. there's no there's, it's not even media I think it's, it's just media it's, too. I think, no it's just like fools on it, the like, street there's anybody on the corner you about it. it's like if there was no media it's just like <clears throat> these are things that are passed down from like people to people generation to generation it's like if I get it yo if you want to be the, the Casanova type dude great that's cool that's cool but don't subscribe me to how you're thinking because I feel as though that's the thing, I guess, when it comes to men sometimes is like, yo, if we're not living up to the status quo of what the world thinks of us. You're not a man. You're not a man. It's like, bro, I don't want to do what you're doing. That does not make me less of who I am. Or does that mean like my I'm less dominant or whatever the I case feel like may be? You would, have a, you would have to have a certain level of security to be able to set yourself aside Bam. and say that. Bam. I, mm. think, I think a lot of men... Don't know what Insecure, real security brother. is. No, they don't, oh, but they don't know what facts. real security is. True. No, that's true too. That's very. That's a good and what point. I was saying, like I'm fifty fifty on it. <clears throat> so like I'm, I'm totally against the whole pulling and the grabbing. Right. I feel like they got to be some sort of respect and some sort of balance to it because everything in my mind needs to have balance. Now I'm not opposed to a dude seeing the woman that he might feel might be his wife or potential opportunity, whatever the case may be. Maybe the best thing that he's seen all day, whatever the case may be, he got to shoot a shot. So hey, I'm, not, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not against the man, I'm not against the man shooting his shot, but respectfully though, yes. you fair, know what I'm saying? And, that, and that's where the balance comes in. That's fair. where Even like you got to draw like, the line. Please, you know what pull up, please pull up accordingly. This that's, is a super yeah, tie Exactly, fair exactly. Enough. Keep exactly. the boots at home. I've <laughs> talked to so many of my homegirls and they've never told me a successful time where a man in the street was like, yo, excuse me, shorty with the sundress, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. It never, it never was like, oh, we were together for five years or we were together for even five months. No. You know what I'm saying? It's always a quick, if it, if it ends up connecting because most, like most women don't really respond positively to those kinds of interactions. So did. if it, if she ends up responding positively, that joint don't really even last too long. So it's and like, are know. you shooting your shot? Or are you really just trying to, like you were saying, like get your numbers up and do all of these things? Cause it's like. 
I've, I've, I've seen but it work. Though. That's Surprisingly, I've seen it work. But the person who's shooting the yeah. shot, they just yep. see woman. And that's Whether a problem in and of itself. Whether it's a grade D woman, yeah. he like, shoot shot. And then right. here's a million dollar thing. It kind of ties back to that whole using something for something else. Mm. It's like kind of like how we said, using sex to get over things, right? Instead of shooting your shot, what if he was like, Hey guys, I'm pretty lonely. Can someone under can can, can we hash I it out and understand? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> not, not even that, but in the sense of like if you were to talk to your homies, it's like, bro, like I'm really out here, whatever the case may be, I'm struggling or I'm suffering in whatever ways you're suffering. It's like I'm pretty sure you wouldn't need to be catcalling if you were to express your emotions to the right people the right way. You won't even have time to catcall, or you will kind of would be a little bit developed, be like, yo, you know what? You know, but is that immature. something that guys do? Because I know as a woman, I confide in my friends when it's something that's no, going on we with don't me. confide in our so, friends. So what's your what are you outlet talking thing? about? So because, like I said, for, for me, if I'm if you there's don't something, in our friends. if there's something that you I can't be the weakest link in your in your man circle. Big but, what's the point of being friends then? If you can't, if you can't. I'm not gonna. I feel like maybe me using the word confiding to look cool is kind of like that heavy. versus looking like the weakest oh, in your group. Like, <laughs> duh. Like, if we keeping it a bean, like that's how most men circle. Out I'm gonna come clean. I'm, I'm, go, clean. I'm going out my circle. Answer, not like that though, because we'll be we'll be getting we'll be getting on. Right, right. Yeah, um, to answer your question, like I'm fortunate enough to have brothers. So like my brothers are like my safety, not my safety net, but like they're the people that I go to like first if I have an issue. And like yo, like am I bugging out? feeling this way am I bugging out for thinking this like I need to cry call my brother up text my brother whatever whatever you feel me like type you know what I'm saying like I'm That's fortunate fire. enough that I have a relationship with my I'm the middle child so like I'm gang the, you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> I'm the link between my we big brother and my, right, and my little Cue brother up the kid Cuddy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm closer like they're both closer to me than they are to each other and just like so how they, how they like feel about any too. things you know what I'm saying like I'm like they're the closest ones to me instead of each other. So my question to, I guess, both of you guys as being men in your families and also being someone's child and being someone's sibling, like, how does that weigh on you? Because it, it affects you. Like, your, your feelings might, like, fall to the wayside. A lot of the times I feel as though, like, um, we as men, we don't understand when it comes to dealing with our women, right? It's like, I'm only mad for this one thing or I'm only angry about this one thing or it's only the heat of this moment. I'm not harboring or I'm. Uh -huh. So guys don't reset. guys guys don't hoarder emotions. You're saying they they do. I'm not saying they do, but they do. But like, because I'm gonna speak as a woman. As a woman, if me and my boyfriend are arguing about, if me and my boyfriend are arguing about something, and scratch that, if we're out and something happens that annoys me or something kind of like rubs me the wrong way, if we're out, obviously I'm not gonna address it because I'll wait till we get home or whatever. But if like say the night happens and I address it and he doesn't respond and then say like the next day happens like I'm still holding on to it. No, like, but what I'm talking about mm. is if he is mad at something, is he going to like he's not mad three days down the line, three weeks down the line. He's if it's usually, unaddressed or if it's addressed. If it's unaddressed, yeah. But if it's addressed, he's not going. If you guys That's get into it, so once it's, I need, so once I need the it to be addressed. Once it's, once so once, it's, once the topic, the, like, once the conversation's addressed, and it's like even if even if he doesn't, even if he comes out that conversation wrong, he's not gonna be like, oh, since I was wrong and she hurt my feelings, I'm a. I don't know if it's a woman thing, but I'm for me, if it gotta go next. three days and my point was not heard yet, we gotta we gotta Why can't get you there. just drop it. We that's gotta just, get there. I mean, nah, I think, but you I know what? The African I, me. I'm, just, I, I'm, 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 I'm siding with Amber on this one because I'm definitely hey, if this topic gotta roll on for three, four days I'm, the whole week, we gonna roll on. Now, no cap. Now, I would say, I don't care anymore. I don't care. I would get to that point too. But listen, I. Me, maybe it's because of what I was saying earlier that I need to express it and I need to hear your side. Once oh, we no, I get throw that. it out in the universe, then it's like, all right, cool, now I'm good. Yeah, even if you, like you say, you come off worse off in a situation, it's like more time to just let it go because it's like, bro, it's not that serious. Not that you deep. Know what I mean? mm. Can I ask a real question though? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. As black men, how do you deal with anxiety? I know it's like, that's, that's more than a five minute question. So, like, fam. Oof. There's so many different ways that you can. And it's like, you could try as many things as possible and it still might not work. 
You know what I'm saying? You might, you might not. My, my fault, my fault, my fault. You could try so many different ways, and it's still like, <laughs> <laughs> nah. But like, you could try so many different things, and it still might not like come to the to the conclusion that you want to like. You want to just be through it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really don't know. Honestly, sometimes I just like breathe, or like I'll take a nap. Like I'll be so anxious that it's like, fam, nah, it's enough. <laughs> like I gotta, yeah. like I gotta go find a way to go take a nap, and I don't know. Like it's. Sometimes it just doesn't. That's, like it just goes away. Sometimes it doesn't, and it's just you just do stuff through it. You know what I mean? Mm. You know what though? I I don't know if it's just me, but I I don't think I've ever felt anxiety. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't like I don't I don't I don't know. I, I really don't have the answer for that because like emotions like anxiety, embarrassment, shame. Like I've really felt those kind of emotions you know what i'm saying mm. I, I really don't know what is about me and my nature but i've i never felt like oh man like what's going on overthink things they're just like Shh. i'm I just think like Shh. that's when i knew i needed to be more emotional and more vulnerable because i was operating under stress for like a a period of like four years, years. and you don't even understand because your body it. gets used to it your body is like we're always on go mode yep. you always got to be thinking about everything your success like especially all right so there was one time after i left uh best buy and i started working at at google i was i did not know i was under i was under stress I don't think you notice it in a I moment i was under though. stress i don't like, think you notice it in a moment. i only i never took a vacation and I never took a vacation. This was the summer that um, Philando Castillo and uh, um, Alton Sterling and Alton Sterling had passed away, and I was like, it was that summer. I was like, yo, I need to get away because my mortality is being questioned. I took a trip, came back to the East Coast, and then it. I, I was so relaxed on that trip. When I came back, I was back into the. I was back into the fire. And then I was on the elevator, and I just felt my body getting smaller. I felt my head separating. And I started panicking. I was in the back of the elevator crying. And I'm like, yo, what is going on? And then my boy, after it all happened, I was like, I called like my best friend. And he was like, yo, I'm pretty sure you had like a, an anxiety, anxiety attack. attack. And I was like, bro, I'm not, I'm good. Like, this is like, but you really got to think about it. It's like, how long has, has your body been under this pressure? And I didn't realize this until I went away. I went to California. And I was just, like super calm and relaxed the first time in like four years. And I came back right into the flames. I was like, bro, like, I need to change the way I'm living or this is going to put me to my grave. Mm. And it's kind of like we don't understand, that, especially as black men, because like I said, we got a whole bunch of things on top of us that we need to do, that we want to do. That's that's holding us back. These agencies that are against our, our own like progression. So you don't realize it. <laughs> How could we help people? Realize that within themselves, the way you did within yourself, because just that like cause, a, that's a good closeout question. Yeah, because that's a great cause just closeout. like you said earlier. Sometimes people are not even conscious of their own behaviors and what's going on within their mind and their feelings. And that's the crazy thing. I think my homeboy saw that I was like, I was going through some something, but he never brought it up. The camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my homeboy saw that I was going through something, but he never brought it up. I was like, because we, we was at the bar just talking crap mm -hmm. one day, and I was like, Yo, bro, I. I got something to tell you. He was like, yeah, do you want to tell me that like, you've been depressed for the last two years? And I was like, nah, I was going to say <laughs> I, I was I'm about to buy this car, but, <laughs> but like, I'm but glad you that you talk about it, but I'm glad that you noticed it. But like, what are, like you ain't want to bring it up in like 165 days times two. Like you ain't want to bring it up in two years. He was like, yeah, I kind of saw it, but I didn't know how to address it. So I think just you, like you said earlier, when it comes to like, Emotions, you just gotta shoot your shot and make sure that, like they're receptive to it. Because mm -hmm. if you bring it up, they might open the floodgates to you, or they might even see something that they don't. They might see something that they never knew was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're right. Like you just gotta do it. I think though, from the outside looking in of somebody who may be dealing with depression or anxiety, I feel like sometimes it has to take that person. And I don't want to say this in the wrong way, but I feel like it's it would have to take that person acknowledging like, yo, I, I do need to address this. There is something going on with me and I do need to, yeah. to work on this. Because some people, like say your friend is battling with depression or anxiety, you come into them maybe trying to say that to them. They may feel like you're trying to Defense, diagnose them. Yeah, you're trying yeah, to make them, true. you know, and I mean... Of course, you being a friend to them, you, you would expect for so them much, to... Though. Yeah, so I think so that much. 
I well, my personal advice. I know you asked the guys, but my personal advice is to, to someone who may um, have a friend or a family member or someone in their life who may be dealing with depression or anxiety would be to just just offer up a helping hand. Like even if it doesn't come off as you addressing like, yo, I noticed that you've been doing X, Y, and Z. Maybe if you had your own experience, maybe start the conversation by addressing like this, and maybe in that conversation they'll identify themselves in that. Like you know what. The story you're saying about yourself, it sounds like something I'm dealing with. You got to be delicate because you're dealing with the male ego. I mean, That's. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and But it's a thing that we all got to do within ourselves. It's like, bro, like if somebody that you genuinely care about and genuinely cares about you is asking you these kinds of questions, it's for a reason. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like put the ego to the side. You shouldn't even really have ego when you're dealing with people that you love anyway. You That's know what facts. I'm saying? Like. That's facts. You know what I mean? So you really got to, like, my advice would be just to listen. Like, you got to listen to yourself. Listen to your body and monitor your body and monitor the way your body reacts to certain things because the body always tells, tells you when something is wrong. Facts. Mm-hmm. When you're sick, what happens? Your nose start running. You're sneezing. Your eyes and all of this. You get a fever. Your body starts to overheat. It's reacting yeah. to something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you get anxiety attacks, like your heart rate starts to go or up. Or when you and wonder why you're not palms, sleeping. You're, you're not, not sleep. sleeping right. You're you can't really yeah. eat properly and yeah. all of these things. Like, Just listen to your body. Listen to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Take walks. You know what I mean? Get a therapist if you think that's what you need to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, honestly, that's really... Or they could get themselves a, a Aries friend um, <laughs> who, who was born in the year of the ox because we would come at you with the axe swinging. <laughs> yep, Anywho, we <laughs> we're closing out, but I want to thank you guys so much for coming and joining me on this episode, the first episode of Mental Health Awareness Month. I want you guys to shout out your info for anybody who may want to reach out. Um, You can reach me at Special K Music, S-P-E-C-K-A-Y, music spelt like music on all the platforms um yeah yeah i was thinking about to not reach out to me at all but i'm pretty <laughs> sure like that, that's that was the initial, I like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was that was the initial thought but then when, then i caught it i was like you know what somebody probably looking at the video was larry like, david the dude who yeah. made Kirby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's some Larry David yeah, energy yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mess with. Yeah, Don't reach yeah. out to me at all. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so so the, the email is uh, gbeard3 at ymail.com. G-B-A-I-R-D, the number three at ymail.com. So if you need somebody to talk to, shoot me an email. What's up, y'all? Um, Chinadu. Um, my friends call me Chin. Um, you can reach me at Chinstrumentals. On IG, Twitter, if you got MySpace, I'm up there. You feel me? You got, you know what I mean? Bebo, I'm up there. High Five, BBM. you feel me? All of that, you feel me? So yeah, Chin Instrumentals, C H I N Instrumentals. You dig? Yeah. And for those of you who don't already follow our podcast, the podcast name on Instagram is A M underscore I Grown Yet. Our website is Am I Grown Yet dot me. All of our episodes, past episodes, I do blogs sometimes, um, but all of that information is on the website. So if you guys have any feedback, feel free to let us know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you share this video to someone who may need to listen to the video or just somebody who maybe has about an hour of spare time and can listen to this episode. But we're signing out and we hope to hear from you guys very, very soon. Deuces.